<clears throat> hey everybody, how's it all going? Got uh, working on. Uh, I was working on some stuff and decided to pull out some books. I was gonna decide. Just wanted to talk about them. Um, especially, oh my gosh, good timing for that last video, I'll tell you, that, um, I don't want to get into it too much, but I saw a lot of people commenting on Ethan's, uh, morning show, uh, video, I, I, I missed it, and I didn't, I was watching it on my way to work, and, oh boy, jeez, I had to fast forward to the end. A lot of it kind of got boring in the middle, but, I mean, it just went to crap. But I think that, um, man, what a good week. <laughs> what a good week to switch gears, man. I'm just not interested in, in any of that. That was just, it was just sad, pathetic, just lame, man. Just lame. Just whatever, dude. But I got this. This is going on. I'm going with my Animal Man costume. I got my goggles going on. Um, found a nice pair for cheap. Just had to trim them up there real quick, you know. So it fits a, it fits a lot better on my head. It actually fits a little bit flush. So the thing is, I'm just gonna have to paint that orange because I'm looking at my Animal Man book. I bought this book secondhand, that's why it kind of looks like shit, but, you know. I know that it's a yellow costume instead of orange, you know. The uh, manufacturer, they could only, you know, they could get as close as they can, but they're not allowed to actually go full bore, otherwise they start breaking copyrights and stuff. I had to ask them about that. I was like, why don't you... I mean, I'm just surprised. I mean, I was grateful enough that they had Animal Man to begin with. I mean, it's... What an obscure character, man. <laughs> what an obscure character to have a costume for, but... It's alright. I'm sorry, I'm just looking through my... Single issues. I got a bunch of... Free comic book day stuff up there. Some girl... Um, was it DC Superhero Girls or whatever? I just decided to bust them out and just start looking. But, uh, I grabbed some books. I'm gonna sit here and talk a little bit about some stuff. And, I'll just talk about one of my favorite heroes. So, I'm gonna take these books out here in my living room. I'll sit out there and talk. Um, I'm near my baby's room and she is asleep. That's why I'm kind of talking really soft right now. We just got her to bed. Sorry, I got my finger in the way. Yeah, we just got her to bed. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna wake her up. I don't wanna be responsible for that. So we yeah. gotta tiptoe out here. favorite superheroes, man. I love the Spectre. I, I have the vast majority of this run on um, digital, because they only came out with the first of these two trades here. Um, actually, you know what? As a matter of fact, and I have it, I have it secreted away in uh, one of my comic boxes, but I have this right here. I have the issue of that. I believe that's issue one of the Spectre, right? They have issue one. I was at a convention, and um, <clears throat> John Ostrander was there, and I saw him, and I met him, and I was like, I was like, whoa, are you like the John Ostrander, writer of the Spectre? And he was like, yeah, and we got to talking a little bit, and uh, 
you know, he was, I asked him, I was like, I was like, man, how did you get away with, you know, doing what you did? Like, you know, being able to put God in your, in your book and, and going and, and being able to do that kind of stuff. And he said, DC just like, I, back then they just kind of like, you know, just, oh, sorry, it's like two in the morning and going on three. Um, I just got off a really long day at work. So I'm sorry if I yawn. Um, he said that they just, they, at editorial, you know, they, they just let you go. They just let, you know, just be who you gotta be. You know, just make it good, you know, that was the only thing they were concerned about at the time, and, uh, yeah, that's what he was telling me. And so, yeah, he knocked it out of the park with, uh, Tom Mandrake. I'll tell you, if I ever worked at DC, man, that's... Tom Mandrake is the dude I want to work with because I love his artwork. I'm just gonna flip through some of these pages. It's just spectacular. Just I mean, just a spectacular run. Oh my gosh. So anyway, um <coughs> So I went looking for just a Spectre comic with his name on it, and um, so I started hunting bins, and there was a lot of people. I mean, there was some books out there that were they were selling for you know five dollars, you know five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. Um, I managed to find this. I don't know if they were. It was like a just a this dude had a, his own booth. He was just trying to get rid of his old collection. He just had a, just boxes, just like just boxes and boxes and boxes, just full of books. And uh, um, he told me he was like, "Yeah, I have them alphabetized. You know, go ahead." So I started digging in, and lo and behold, I found the Spectre. I found this the issue with this cover for fifty cents. For fifty. Sense. I was like, yo, oh, man, I got to get on this. And so I did, man. I got on it. I uh, um, hunted him back down. I went back into the that creator's alley and um, found him out. Um, I had to wait patiently because some guy, like, I don't know what this dude, like, I don't know. Is this, like, is this common, a common thing to do, but people bring in, like, you know, if they know somebody's going to be there, or certain creators going to be there, they bring in, like, long boxes of nothing but whatever they wrote or drew or whatever. <coughs> and just have them sign literally every single, every single book in there. Like, is that, like, that just seems so, I don't know, over the top to me. I don't know, I could never do it. I'm like, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm just like... You know, maybe five books. You know, just you know, be courteous. Oh, uh, but yeah, this guy had had stacks and stacks of Star Wars books and had them sign them all, and I had to wait patiently. Here I am with this book, and and um, you know, he obviously he recognized me. He was like, "Wow, you managed to find one, huh?" And I was, like, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and he's like, "Cool," and and. Uh, so I handed it to him, and he's he's getting ready to sign it, and I go, and he's like, uh, anywhere you want me to sign it? And I said, I was like, you wrote the book, you sign it wherever you want. And so he did, he signed it like right here, right across the front. I have it, I'll, I'll bust it out here in a, um, on a later day, um, and just, just so I can show everybody. Um, I mean, what about you guys? I mean, what, what? Any any conventions that you went to that you're just like man that was awesome just you finally met a creator that you've always wanted to meet and you had their man should have the autograph for you so you just it's, it's kind of a cool feeling I like it I liked it anyway so I'm not quite done with this one yet my uh, DC showcase but good gosh look at that thing I mean this thing is thick I mean I like seriously this thing is thick. Um, this book has got, what's its page count? Oh my gosh. 
610. 610 was the last one we looked at. 612. Let's see, I saw 612, 14, 16, right? 616 pages, and then you got like little bits of, you know, ads in the back. Um. I used to have that one. Uh, sorry, uh, for those of you who, are, who aren't watching, I'm, I'm looking at a bunch of ads in the back of here for like DC showcases. I used to have the Superman family one, but I sold it because I uh, I just needed money. <laughs> I just really needed money. Um, I think I also had the Batman volume one. I sold that one too because I just really needed like we just really needed money. Um, it was a really hard week that week. Um, they were cutting my hours back pretty deep. Um, so I just, I had to sell a bunch of my stuff to sell some comics and some DVDs and stuff just to make some ends meet there. Just keep, you know, mostly just trying to keep eggs and bread, you know, so, so my wife and I could eat when we, but, uh. Yeah, oh yeah, Ollie's, Ollie's had that, Yoda Hex, oh my gosh, sorry you guys, everybody, I'm just yawning, oh, I'm just, I'm beat, man, I just, I went through a really long day at work, it's so busy, anyway, they had the Jonah Hex for $2.99, I'm pretty sure they had Haunted Tank at my location, they had Haunted Tank for, uh, um, for $2.99, they had, uh, Unknown Soldier there for $2.99, uh, I wish they had Teen Titans, but they didn't. I already own Booster Gold. Metal Man is number one is the one that I need. I managed to get uh, Metal Man Volume Two on auction for like fourteen bucks off of eBay. And that's that was a deal because I mean, I mean it's about the cover price, but most people sell that volume for like thirty, forty bucks. Volume One is selling ridiculously. Excuse me. Ridiculously high. Shazam got that for two ninety nine. Fam Stranger got that for two ninety nine. Both really good books. Digging it. They didn't have any Justice League. They didn't. Have, they had um, Flash or Green Lantern Volume Two, um, and I think they had a couple issues of or a couple volumes of Number One. I already had Number One, so I got, I got my Volume Two. Uh, they didn't have Wonder Woman. They had. I, s I swear they had a flash, but they only had like a handful of copies when I went in, and I didn't get, I just didn't have enough money when I went in there the one time. There was other books there that I was like, man, I really want to jump on these, and uh, and it was it was sucky because the books I jumped on because I was like, man, I want to get these ones and read these ones real quick, and uh, those were ones they they had a couple other copies of them, and those stuck around a lot longer. Then the ones that I was like, ah, oh, that's cool, I'll just get these ones later, and then those ones were the ones that were gone. Like that Aquaman. That volume of Aquaman, I'm pretty sure that was volume one. They, you know, they sold out of that one real quick. No green arrows. Yeah, none of these. None of the Batman books. No Superman ones. I have. You're fine. Dog will be in mm. obnoxious. Yes. You're being a stinker, huh? Oh, you need to stop that. Especially since you hop up on my side. You dirty paws. Anyway, so, um... So most of the time when you hear about the Spectre, you're going to hear about the Jim Corrigan version. And, uh, obviously he's the, I mean, he was the longest running Spectre. Um, they had Christmas Allen. This is, uh, no, I, I remember why the, I haven't read this one yet. It's because I think this book right here, The Tales of Unexpected, this is like issue, or volume two to Chris Allen. That's why I haven't read it yet. 
because I got to get the volume one. Yeah, man. I got this one for pretty cheap, though. I, got, I think I got this off of... Did I get it from Big Luck or uh, Ollie's? No, I must have got this off of something. I know I got that one for really cheap, though. Maybe I got this one. Oh, no, no, no. I remember. I got this at um, my local comic book shop. Um, one of them, because we got, like, I got four shops in my area, which is incredibly unique for, I mean, anywhere having four comic book shops, especially the size of uh, the city that I'm in. We're very, we're kind of a very, I don't know, mid-sized metropolis. But we're not that, I mean, we're not huge, but, you know, we do okay. We do okay. Um, but um, the South Side shop, I mean, they have like a big spread that they put all like marked down trades. And I think this one was selling for like $5.99. So, uh, yeah, I got on it. I'll, I'm sure I'll pick up volumes one and two of that later, or volumes one and three of that. Um, <clears throat> this is, I'm. I know this isn't, I'm not doing this one like my other videos where I, you know, I sit in front of the camera in a, in a costume and stuff. I just, man, I just wanted to do something real laid back. Something just kind of chill, man. Put some good tunes on. We can all just relax too. <sighs> man. Sorry, no, I, uh, you know, I, uh. I was, I was telling my wife about that live stream. I was actually playing it a little bit. She was listening to it, and man, I could tell she was getting... It was getting on her nerves. <laughs> and she just, you know, she just wanted me to shut it off. It was just... I don't blame her. I don't know about you, any of you guys. I just... I hate dealing with that kind of stuff, man. I'm done with that. The drama... You know, I want to go back to talking about comics and just having fun. So, I know I keep sidetracking. All right, so, um, Jim Corrigan, right? So he was a he was a police officer, I believe it was in the nineteen twenties, and um, he was busting up some. He was trying to bust up some gangsters, um, and he was fast tracking. He was on the fast track to do so, and uh, his informant um, turned out to be a rat, and um, he <clears throat> led him to his death. Um, Jim Corrigan got put into a, a barrel full of concrete and um, was thrown into a lake where he drowned or suffocated, however you want to put it. And, um, his girlfriend at the time, his fiance, she was shot and wounded, and he spared her life after he had become the specter. He managed to spare her life and continued on, you know, and continued on as the specter. You know, he could never actually really interact with her. But, um,. You know, he ended. Um, the Spectre ends up. You know, he ends up joining the JSA later on down the road. Uh, continues to do his own thing. He shows up throughout the universe at different points. Oh, our baby girl woke up, huh? Huh? Oh, you up there, sweetie pies? Hmm. She's got a little Wonder Woman. Her little Wonder Woman onesie on. Oh, sweetie pie. <coughs> yeah, you look tired. I know, she's tired. Oh, rubbing her eyes. You need some... You need a midnight snack. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That boo juice. That fresh tap. <laughs> Her home brew. But um, yeah, man. I um, so I really like the Spectre. I really love the idea, especially what um, uh, what John Ostrander did when he made him 
the uh, Angel of Wrath, you know, and it was like uh, combining him, combi- you know, the, the Wrath had to be combined with a human to keep it in check, and, um, yeah, it's him fighting the Angel Michael. That is just such a cool story, oh my gosh, like, I'll tell you what, man, if you guys, like, if you like supernatural stuff, if you like supernatural superheroes, like, the Spectre is, it is, he is the way to go, these books right here in particular, uh, Wrath of God and, uh, Crimes and, uh, Crimes and Judgment, (coughs) fantastic stories, man, I mean... Ostrander did, I mean, he did his best in this series. I mean, there's, there are stories, I mean, you gotta go back and reread. <coughs> For sure, you gotta go back and read, reread some of these things. Like, there's, there's a, a story that takes place in, uh, during Christmas, where, um, he puts out a call. Okay. I want to ruin too much. But, um... Okay, no, no, okay it's not in that one. It's got to be in the volume two, then. It's after... Oh, yeah, he fights uh, Etrigan quite a bit, and... Phantom Stranger... Uh, Dr. Fate. Um, Eclipso. I just, I, that was the other thing cool. That was, I always thought was really cool too, is how, how he was tied into, um, how he tied himself into Eclipso. I always thought, like, the, or how Ostrander weaved those two together. Well, anyway, so there's a, Chris, there's a story about, uh, um, the Spectre, he's so mad, he just, like, because he just lost somebody, and he's, like, he, you know, he's telling people, uh, you know, um, if you, if you screw up, I will, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, like, I'm out to destroy you, like, you're gonna die, like, that's it, no holds, you know, just unleashed, and, um, his, uh, his, pastor friend is trying to talk him down from it because uh, this young man ends up um, killing someone and uh, and like a bunch of other things happen and he's you know he's he, he's out there uh, doing his vengeance and stuff now the young lad uh, who who uh, he killed someone he's supposed like he was supposed to die or he, somebody had shot him, and he was supposed to die, and then, uh, Spectre ends up, I mean, in the end, Spectre ends up, like, he ends up saving him, um, due to, uh, due to, due to it being Christmas, and, you know, he's, like, he realizes that, uh, Jesus would have forgiven him for what he had done, and it was just, oh, it was such a good story, I'm sorry, I'm, like, not doing a great job at retelling it, I'm trying to, I know I have it in here. It's one of these. One of the things that I really liked about this run, just oh, what I really, really loved about it. Um, so this book is like heavy in um, theology. It's really heavy in philosophy. Um, and weighing morality, like it's things like that. It just has it, uh, to me. Those are really that's at the core of a really good book. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So in this um, issue fifteen, no, no, no. I think it was before that. Was it before? It might have been before that one. Spectre. Um, he comes in. And, uh, there's a warring, na- there's like two warring nations, and I think it was, um, who was it? It was the nation with, um, 
Count Vertigo and some other some other country and they're going to war and Spectre just goes like that's I've had enough and just like wipes out both countries like almost completely and uh like it causes the world to panic they're just like yo this dude just like wiped out you know hundreds of thousands of people in like the blink of an eye and they end up they end up um enlisting superman to take on to take him on and uh superman ends up getting possessed by the spear of destiny um, which if some of you aren't familiar with that artifact, I know, sorry, I'm bouncing all over the damn place, here. but that artifact, all right, so in the DC universe, oh, it, it is the spear that, that pierced the side of Christ and, and, and led to, you know, his, his death, even though I think technically, biblically, Jesus was already dead by then, the spear just poked his side just to, you know, see and tell that he was dead, and that's when the water rushed from his body, and fled to the soil and, and all that but um so in DC that spear is corrupt um I think it was corrupted by Hitler if I remember correctly like um Hitler did some like occult stuff to it and um so whoever's holding it becomes corrupted by Hitler's madness and he's you know, they, whoever's holding it starts to just go insane and uh, starts becoming power hungry and, and all this other stuff. And it's it's a really interesting tool. And uh, I don't think it's shown up yet in New 52. I don't know if it's shown up in Rebirth. I don't think it has yet. I'm pretty positive it hasn't shown up in New 52 because I don't remember seeing anything with it. But... Um, it, it definitely it's it's an artifact that showed it showed up just a couple of times in in pre 52 but um it played a really good really big part in specter at least in a storyline for that um man sorry i'm just i'm a little bit tired and but just feeling just feeling the music man just it's good it's good just to talk about fun stuff but uh if you can find i mean if you can find this one in your comic book shop i would recommend it pick up pick up every showcase and essential that you can if you can get it at cover price or cheaper do it seriously do it if you're like especially if you're new to collecting i cannot recommend these books enough i mean yeah you know uh Nineteen ninety nine for that you get eight issues. Nineteen ninety nine, you get six hundred pages. You know it's like thirty issues for this book. You know I mean, dang, you can't beat that. I mean it's in black. Yeah, it's in black and white. And for the first time, oh, I was so mad for the first time ever. So I was going through my Phantom Stranger book, and there was an ink ink glob in between pages I'm sitting there I'm like I'm, I, I'm flipping it I, that's when I realized I was like oh my gosh there's there's pages stuck together and I I'm sitting there trying to peel them apart and I'm trying not to rip things and I'm just hearing the paper just <laughs> oh man my heart sunk <laughs> it sunk so Oh, it sunk so low. I was like, no, I'm dying inside. My books are getting ruined. <laughs> uh. Uh. Hear the baby crying. But, um. Yeah, guys, um. Think of whatever. I'm probably missing so much. Anyway, so, but yeah, the Spectre. He um, he travels with the JSA for a little while. Uh, I don't remember if he. I don't think he gets. I don't think he was in the JSA. They got locked in limbo. Um, there was an arc that's that's how they kind of wrapped up the JSA. Was they got stuck in in like this Armageddon fight. 
um, in like in an endless time loop. Um, it was kind of a really dumb story. I'm not gonna lie. I read it and uh, I didn't like it. I was not very impressed by it. But I'm pretty sure he wasn't in that. I'm, I'm, I think the Spectre escaped because he. I know the Spectre shows up. He showed up in a lot of in between of that, but especially before all the rest of the JSA made their appearances. The Spectre was definitely back by then, so I don't think he was one of them. I know for a fact, I know it was what, it was a uh, Starman, Hawkman, um, um, Alan Scott, for sure, was Wildcat, and it might be Wild, maybe, I'm thinking Wildcat was in it too. And I think one of the Black Canaries was, I think she was also in that group that got stuck in there, but I might be wrong. I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm so tired, my brain is like fogging up real bad. But, you know, I gotta do this, you know, just gotta do it for you guys, and I gotta do it for myself. I just need to jam like a dog, man, he's falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a chill, chill day. Alright, I guess, oh shoot, yeah, I'm at a half hour. I'll let it, I'm just gonna let it be. Alright guys, <coughs> later.